What's up guys? Welcome back to Crawl TV. We missed last Tuesday's upload, sorry about that. Uh, I had to catch up on a few things that are going on in our lives, but we're back this week with another update on the Rock Buggy playlist. Now, on this week we'll be starting out with getting that tunnel cleaned up and getting those floor pans welded in, and then I'll explain what happened with the bug project from this day to uh, where it became rock buggy because there's a there's a big lapse in time <laughs> that I have to uh, to make up for. So without further ado, let's get started on cleaning up that tunnel, welding in those pans, and then uh, I'll tell you how it went from a class 11 project to becoming rock buggy. Here we go. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Today's goal is to work on the pans. So we're gonna get these pans welded into this thing. Um, obviously first we have to get this really cleaned up. We have to get the pans cleaned up, make sure that all the mating surfaces are ready to rock and roll. Let's get started and make some progress today. Okay guys, so we're up to the point where we are welding the floor pans back into the bug already. Um, this all happens pretty quickly. Steph went ahead and ground down that like inch or so along the edge on both sides so that I could have a good clean um, bare metal surface to weld to. And uh, I already went ahead and put this side in, but I wanted to talk you guys through what I did on this side since I haven't started yet. Um, I went ahead and punched holes all the way through the sheet metal all the way down so I start by tacking these holes in that gives me a good solid foundation to weld into and it minimizes the sheet metal warp when you're working with 18 gauge metal it's really easy to spread heat where you don't want it and get the metal to separate which causes your uh, your weld basically to cavitate and you'll see holes pop up in your welds so um, step one clamp it down exactly where you want it you want to get your body lines matched up as, as well as you can and then we're gonna go through and we're gonna fill all these little plug welds to hold the floor in place. And then we'll stitch weld it uh, about every four or five inches or so. You can actually see on this other side if you wanna check it out how I welded this. But um, essentially what I did was after I got the plug welds in, which you can see here, I went ahead and actually laid some beads all the way through. And you don't wanna weld the entire pan because that actually creates um, weakness in the pan, believe it or not. If you have one continuous weld with no stoppage, then that entire weld can crack because it is a fracture point. So we stitch welded this and that's completely in. That's as in as it's gonna be for this because we wanna just put seam sealer over that and keep that nice and secure. We're gonna do the same on this side now. So uh, it's pretty hard right now because I can't point the fans at me. Um, MIG welding is metal inert gas. So you're using 75%, 25% CO2 argon. Um, and that's a shielding gas over your arc. If you point a fan at yourself, you blow your shielding gas away and then you get dirty welds. So I gotta suffer through it, be a little hot, but we'll, uh, we'll knock this side out. And then we've got pans again, baby, just like that. Pretty amazing how quickly this all comes apart and starts to go back together.
After we got the pans welded in that day, Steph and I went home. It was so hot in that shop that we didn't want to hang out any longer, especially since we couldn't point the fans at us because we were running the welders. So I went back up there a few days later with my friend Luke, and while I got started on repairing rust in the body that had come back from sandblasting, Luke got to work on seam sealing those pans into the tunnels, and that is where we left off on the bug. So after Luke was up in the shop with me that day, we did not get back up to the shop for months to work on the bug. And the reason is because I had just left my job and I spent all of my time purchasing materials, shipping them out to my house and finishing building the house. That seemed to be a much higher priority at the time, <laughs> understandably getting my house finished. But because of that, I didn't have the extra time or money to go up to the shop and get working on that class 11 build. So it sat dormant upside down on a rotisserie, bare metal, freshly back from sandblasting, and I didn't have the time to get up there and work on it. So a lot of time passed, and now we're pretty much up to present day. I had plans to go up there with a trailer and actually load the car onto the trailer, ship it back to my house, and uh, get to working on it when I could back here at home. But the day that I went up there to get the car, my friend Nick said, hey, I might regret this, but I have an idea and it involves this bug and this 43 inch tire and he so he rolled a 43 inch tire up next to the bug and he said what would you say about us building this car into a rock crawler and i was like uh well i have to talk to steph about it because she and i are partners for this class 11 build but let me see what she says my inclination is to just say yes like i would love to see this car built no matter what we're building it into i would just love to finish the project and if we want to build another class 11 car, you know, we always can't. So uh, I came home that night, left the car at the shop, talked to Steph about it. We both agreed that this would be a really cool thing to do, building this car for SEMA, something that we could use more regularly than a race car. We could take it on the Great American Crawl. We could do all these rock crawling things with it. It would be a great media piece. And um, we would have more aftermarket support in, as far as putting the car together. So. We ended up agreeing to it. We went back to Nick and we said, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. And we almost immediately got started on building this into rock buggy. So that kind of bridges the gap as far as where we left off, sealing those pans and where we're about to pick up, which is cutting those pans in half. <laughs> so um, there's a huge drastic change that happened right around this point in time. And that is the gist of it. I finished building that house, this house in that time period and um, we got the Bronco built in that time period, took this to SEMA, took this to King of the Hammers, um, did a lot of other things, but the bug really didn't do anything during that time. So there you have it. There is the reason for this uh, getting put on ice. This is the reason that it did not get built into a class 11. And this is how Rock Buggy kind of came to be. So uh, the next video will be pretty close to present day as we get started on ripping into this bug cutting it into a million pieces and turning it from what was a class 11 build into a pretty extreme rock crawler build. So that will be on the next episode that airs next Tuesday. So please stay tuned, subscribe if you're not, leave a comment down below, like this video if you liked it, and I will see you guys on the next episode of Crawl TV. Thanks for watching.